right, so I want to talk about the state of the nation, which includes the nation states, but also the post nation state, uh, which we are going towards. Uh. So, Casper, he was just talking before me, uh, my wonderful friend from Estonia, his government, Estonia, is moving towards a post nation state reality. You know, they are pioneers. Uh. And Casper started with talking about his birth number. So let me talk a little bit about my name. My name is Tarkovsky Tempelhof. And the first reaction people have to that is saying, is that a fake name? No, it's not a fake name, but it is in a way, actually. So Tarkovsky is invented, but legal. And Tempelhof is real, but not legal. So let me tell you the story how this happened. My family lived in Poland after the Second World War, and they were named Tempelhof, which is a Jewish-German kind of name, which was not very popular. So my father read in a book about a boy called Tarkovsky, so they just you know, burned the passports and created a brand new passport called Tarkovsky because it was a much more common Polish name. And then, during 1968, they got kicked out of the country, and they came to Sweden, and they, had to, they only had their fake passports on them, called Tarkovsky, so it became the de facto legal name, although it was fake, yeah? and simply done because of the fear of nationalism, essentially. So, I was born with a fake legal name and a real non-legal name, so I use both interchangeably. So when people ask me, what's your real name? I'm like, well, it depends. Do you need the state to approve who you are? You know, I don't. No, I just got married on the blockchain. We don't need the state to approve our marriage. We don't need the state to approve anything. And this is quite interesting because when I grew up in socialist Sweden, you know, we, we thought that you know, the government was a magical entity of some sort, a unicorn. You know, like when you say you're an anarchist to people, the first question everyone asks is, but who's going to build the roads? What about the roads? Okay, so let's look at who's building the roads. Huh? Taxpayers pays for the roads, private contractors build the roads. The government is an expensive middleman in the whole process, nothing else. Huh? <laughs> Okay, so I, I, you know, I grew up thinking the same thing, that the government is a magical entity of some sort, right? But then I went behind the government matrix in the worst possible way. I worked as a defense contractor, I know, please forgive me, for the US military, the biggest bully on the block. Uh, and I helped, you know, I assisted in processes to create and overthrow governments in various war zones. And when you see, when you get down to that level of governance, you know, like when I was in the rebel territory in Libya, and you see, and you ask yourself, what is the government, right? And you see, it's like, at that time, it was like 10 human rights lawyers hiding out in a basement, literally, and their own, one and only job was to talk to foreign media to get national recognition for the transnational, transnational National Council, TNC, the rebel council at the time. That was their one and only job. They had no other governance function, none. The entire society was run purely by volunteers on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, right? So, uh, you know, traffic policing was done by 12-year-old Boy Scouts. Security was done by teenagers with AKs uh, and other guns. You know, engineers were keeping the cell phone networks alive at night. Hmm? Everything was done by civil society. They even had about 200 volunteers picking up trash in the street. And the whole society was extraordinarily well run. It really worked, you know? It worked without a government in complete anarchy. So, you know, so this made me question, what is the point of a government? What does a government actually do? So last night I went to Occupy Paris and they said something. I, I asked a guy, I was like, why are you here? Why are you at Occupy? You know, what is your message? And he said something along the lines of like, oh, well, the government doesn't, it's no good and they don't do what we want. And 
I was like, okay, yeah, I understand very well. So what do you want from the government then? <clears throat> and he's like, well, I want more benefits, more help, more yada yada. And I was like, well, if the government is no good, why would you want the government to help you more, right? Why can't you just do it yourself? I mean, we have plenty of good system that works, Bitcoin to start with. But I'm gonna get more into that in a bit. Right, so the government is a complete matrix, right? It's an illusion that we don't need to consent to. There is no point of having a government, really. But people still want governance services, so let's provide governance services. So I think the nation state, based on our, all empirical evidence, the nation state is going away due to globalization, due to all of that, right? So if we look at the nation state as a concept, it's only been around for 400 years since the Treaty of Westphalia which established the oligopoly on governance throughout the world, right? And, you know, many greater scholars have written about it, how it's going away, and, you know, there is no question about it, really. So either we have nations like Estonia, um, who adapt to the change and provide global services for citizens, or we have big governments like, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia, Russia, US, etc., who are probably not, not going to adapt to the change and implode as a result. So, but what happened after that? What is the post-nation state alternative? So, the post-nation state alternative right now that everyone seems to be going towards, which is, in my opinion, the worst idea ever, is the United Nations. Hmm. I think the United Nations are the biggest criminals in the world, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, let me tell you why. So we have all these illusions of consent. The nation state have provided us with a total of roughly 200 governance service alternatives, which we can't actually choose between because depending on what passport you have, you can't freely move between countries. And that is the actual problem with the nation state alternative, is that you don't have freedom of choice. The UN, the way we're going with UN, with all their kind of do-gooder, fluffy, you know, world peace rhetoric behind all of that, is a one-fit-all world model. It's a one-world government, you know, and that's truly a bad thing. That's going to lead to perpetual war. There are moral principles, you know, crafted somewhere in a headquarter, you know, in Columbia University in New York or in Geneva or wherever, can be the greatest, most fantastic, fluffy principles you want, but it's not going to suit everyone, and we can't force people to adapt a model they don't want. We have, we have to get over the illusion that we're on some kind of moral high horse. We are not on a moral high horse. We have to step down from our moral high horse and just say people need to live the life as they want, right? So, you know, the way I see it is we have two ways to choose between. One is a one-fit-all one model, like UN or whatever other entity that may appear. The other one is a, is a post-nation state society of competing models where everyone, where there is open source protocol for governance and everyone can create their own governance, you know, whether it's physical governance, like uh, city states uh, that people can easily opt in or, or out of, or whether it's virtual nations, like my organization, this nation, right? So, in my opinion, that is the best way, because that permits everyone to create exactly the governance model of their choice. So let's look at this, you know, this all sounds very utopian, I know, you know, people always tell that to me, you know, oh, you're such an utopian, Suzanne, you know, oh, it all sounds wonderful, but how do you actually do it? Well, it's not that complicated. Go to GitHub, we have the code, you know, and you can fork the code and you can create your own nation. It's truly not that difficult to do, right? So just create your own nation, do it, and, and you know, whether you want to create a physical nation, a micronation of sort, like Liberland, or whether you want to create a virtual nation for world citizens, like BitNation, you know, you can truly do it. We have all the open source protocols. Everything is open source. You can just go fork it, do it on yourself, on your own, 
right? And <coughs> sorry, Simone, I forgot to look at the timer. That's right. <coughs> I can see you moving nervously. <laughs> Am I above the time? Am I fine? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So. Um, yeah. So if you look at these, um, you know, if you look at the current nation state system, what's wrong? You know, people say, oh, well, you know, but we have democracy. Okay, so let's take a look at democracy. What is democracy? In my opinion, democracy is coercion, it's mob rule, right? I think democracy is the biggest scam in modern history. Democracy is saying your, right, your rights are going to be stripped away from you simply because you happen to be outnumbered. That is the message of democracy. And people are saying, oh, well, we have a social contract. Where is the social contract? Can someone show me the social contract? Because I've never seen it, never ever in my life. Nobody has ever shown me, and I never signed that social contract. You know, and these are the things people say to legitimize the use of violence to collect our private property. It's unlawful. So what I believe is a post-nation state future is the ability to go online to say, I want to make a voluntary agreement with you, whoever in the audience, you know, you there. I want to make it and I want to sell my car to you, okay? I want to choose my own code of law. I want to choose my own arbitrators. I want to choose my own everything. That is truly liberty. No social conformity, no legal conformity, just simple freedom. Let life live. Estonia is away in that direction. Liberland, the small breakout republic in Eastern Europe, is another way to that. And BitNation is a way to that in a virtual sphere, in a virtual space. And that is the post-nation state non-one-fit-all model we should strive for. <laughs>